Welcome everyone. I'm really excited to have you guys here. My name is Christina McClellan and I am the education manager for AVA. We are the art museum at UAB. If you haven't been to see us before, um, we are on the campus of the University of Alabama at Birmingham. We present eight to 10 exhibitions per year, highlighting a mix of regionally, nationally, and internationally acclaimed artists, focusing almost exclusively on contemporary art. And we serve a diverse audience of university faculty, staff, and students, as well as our surrounding local, regional, and now through Zoom, national and international communities. So two of those exhibitions that we have every year are uh, ones that highlight UAB students, uh, one of which is the Bachelor of Fine Arts exhibition that's coming up in April, but the one we're here to celebrate tonight is the Department of Art and Art History's annual juried student exhibition. So I want to welcome you to the virtual reception for the 45th annual juried student exhibition. I'm joined here tonight by John Fields, the Jim Sokol and Lydia Cheney Endowed Director for AVA, John Fields, the Department of Art and Art History Chair, Rich Gear, and the Program Coordinator for University of Alabama at Birmingham's Department of, of Art and Art History um, Program Coordinator, Melissa Yes. So um, we're gonna hear from everyone here in just a few minutes. Uh, but uh, before we get started, I do have a uh, few housekeeping notes. Please note that discriminatory or hate language of any kind will not be tolerated. This event is being recorded, uh, but the recordings will largely be the screen shares and the spotlighted videos, speakers. So we want to encourage you, if you feel comfortable, turn on your screen and help celebrate with us. The sign language for applause is this. So uh, make sure that you celebrate your favorite artists, your friends, family, uh, and their work by uh, giving a good sign language applause to the camera um, when we go through the exhibition. You can also write any words of praise, encouragement, et cetera, in the chat box. The chat box is located at the bottom of your screen. Um, so please put your comments, questions, or a request for technical help there in that chat box. Um, the order for events tonight will be, uh, oh, sorry, I skipped ahead. Uh, I do have a few quick announcements. Um, so Ava, in addition to the juried exhibition, also has three other exhibitions that are currently now or will in uh, shortly be available online as virtual reality tours. So you're going to see one tonight with the juried exhibition. Um, but since we cannot be open to the public at the moment, we have put up these exhibitions online on our website. So be sure to check those out. These exhibitions are accompanied by upcoming programming influenced by the exhibitions. So we will have in March, a night of chamber music featuring local artists, uh, 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 performance artists. Uh, the uh, spoken word event uh, at the end of March will feature UAB students from the Department of English. And then our, of course, our coloring night series features in on March 4th, Derek Krakow, who is the Associate Professor of Printmaking here at UAB. And then on April 1st, our own Bachelor of Fine Arts graduating seniors. Um, and then Melissa, you have a couple announcements? I do, thank you, Christina. Just a couple from our department. And one of them happens to be my mute screen, is that BFA applications are due on March 12th. So you're, if you're a student here on the call, I wanna remind you to go ahead and consider whether the BFA is a good option for you. Ask your faculty advisor or me if you have any questions about the BFA program. I see Stacy Holloway with her applause because she's our BFA coordinator for the department and she rocks. So students, email us if you have questions about the BFA program. We hope to see your application. Now, we have another announcement from our department, a unique and new collaboration with UAB's sustainability. At their solar house, which is um, near Rass Hall uh, on our undergraduate side of campus, we have installed an exhibition of artwork made by UAB faculty and staff during and about the coronavirus pandemic. It's a really exciting exhibition featuring numerous artists that express quite a range of responses to the pandemic from everything to loneliness to hope, joy, appreciation, depression, and isolation. And it also features a number of styles of art making from video, printmaking, photography, sculpture, and more. So I, we really hope that you will come see the show. If you are part of the UAB community, you do have access to the Solar House to see the exhibition. Just shoot us an email so we can give you that access. 
If you're not part of the UAB community in an official capacity, you can go up and look through the windows. That's the best we can do at this time. But we're, we really encourage you to check out the Solar House. Thank you for being here and I will pass it back to you, Christina. Thanks, Melissa. Um, so be sure to check our website as well as the department's websites for any other upcoming announcements and events. Um, but on to tonight's events. We are we have a great lineup for you guys. We're first going to hear from the department chair, Rich Gear, and then from John Fields, the AVA director. And then we will take you on a virtual tour uh, of the entire exhibition. So we're going to get to see every single artwork. And then when we're done with that, um, we will announce the awards for tonight's juried event. So um, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started and turn over to you, Rich. Ah, thank you very much and, uh, and welcome. Uh, welcome to everybody, friends, family, faculty, staff, talented young artists, uh, students for now, but getting ready to go out in the world and make significant changes. Under any normal circumstances, we would be all together. There would be food, there would be drinks, uh, there would be family. Uh, and unfortunately, we're still in this situation where we continue to do the best we can to push uh, all these major events uh, and milestones uh, into the, our pixelated screens. Uh, but as spring looms and uh, the daffodils are coming up, uh, there is a feeling of hope that we will be able to gather again together soon, hopefully as summer uh, comes along. I cannot thank you guys enough for all the work that you've done, uh, and I congratulate all of you. You should be extremely proud of yourselves. The show looks just terrific. Um, and I did want to... Um, give uh, a couple of words uh, of advice that's kind of uh, tied into the juror's statement, uh, which is if you were not chosen for the show, if you did not win an award, don't worry. It's part of, you know, if you don't get into a show today, tomorrow, you're the top winner. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I brought all of my, um, these represent all of the letters of rejection that I've gotten throughout my career. I keep a file. So just so you know, we all go through it, and um, and it's uh, part of the process. But um, to, we were really fortunate this year to have uh, an international rock star artist uh, who is who jured our competition. Uh, Paul Benjamin is an Atlanta-based artist uh, who's recently had solo projects in Europe and the Chelsea District of New York City. Um, he's a multimedia artist, and he left us with this beautiful artist state, uh, juror's statement, excuse me, and so I'd like to just go ahead and read that to you, uh, and he states that he's very honored to be the 2021 juror for the University of Alabama at Birmingham, 45th Annual Juror Student Exhibition. Uh, thank you to all the students who submitted work. It was great to see the diverse media applied to the different works. Congratulations to each artist that was selected. The works selected reflect an adroit use of concept, aesthetic, and craftsmanship. The work chosen are a small sample of the hard work being put in by the students and faculty. These are unprecedented times and the work being created by artists now tells our story collectively and your story individually. Whether your work was selected or not, I challenge you to continue recording history through your eyes. That is the profound responsibility of an artist. So I would also like to uh, express my, my great thanks to the staff at AVA. As always, Christina, Shalika, Tina, and John, they're the best collaborators to share a building with you could ask for. And they've really uh, helped tremendously in uh, making your work look like just any other professional show that comes through the center. Uh, and and also, and especially to my colleagues and the faculty. So please help me uh, give a round of applause to the faculty and staff who come every day and, uh, and help out. I know what they mean to you guys and what you mean to them. And so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and pass this back to uh, Christina or John, whoever wants to pick up. Thank you. Thanks, Rich. I'll just, I'll just go ahead and jump in since I think I'm up next on the agenda. I do want to um, sort of echo a couple of things that both Christina and Rich have said. You know, um, we exhibit artists at AVA from all over the world, 
Um, but we do have two student exhibitions that we do every year, the BFA exhibition and then this, this exhibition that we're here to celebrate tonight. And we, um, we definitely sort of recognize this is a very valuable uh, component to your education as art students and aspiring artists. We also see them as a valuable component of our programming. Um, and so we like to really make sure that we give you the exact same treatment that we would any other artist exhibit in our space. We give your shows um, the care and attention and the respect that we would any artist. Um, and so Christina mentioned that there are three other artists exhibiting alongside you, all three artists at the top of their field, two from New York, one from Philadelphia. And I think this is the first time in Ava's history that we've had an exhibiting exhibiting artists who have not been able to actually see their exhibitions in person. And so I just wanted to sort of, you know, reiterate that this is a sort of strange and weird time for us as well, but we really appreciate you sort of rolling with it and um, participating in the exhibition anyway. Um, we, we, we think there's still a lot, of, lot to learn and um, we're thankful to have these type of events to sort of help celebrate um, your hard work and, um, it really is one of the best student uh, juried exhibitions that we've had in recent memory. So congratulations and um, thanks a lot. Thanks, John. Okay, so now what we're going to do, if I can get my camera on, there we go. Um, what we are going to do next is we are going to head over to the AVA webpage um, and we'll ask Amanda to start screen sharing here in, in just a second. And we are going to walk through the virtual reality experience. So um, you can get to our webpage by uab.edu forward slash AVA, and then navigate over to exhibitions and select the 45th annual juried student exhibition. Go ahead, Go ahead and, and scroll, scroll down, down the, the page. page. Oh, I hope that echo doesn't <laughs> last. Um, so if you'll, Amanda, you'll go back up and we'll go ahead and uh, there's the virtual tour and, and go to full screen. screen. And, and this, this is, is our, our virtual tour. tour. So we're going to start off, and Melissa is going to, to read out, out the artist, artist title for each. If the, the echo, echo continues, since the echo is continuing, I think I'm going to drop the name of the, the titles of work in the, in the chat, chat so that you don't have to hear, hear me, me for, for the next, next few minutes. minutes. That work, Christina? Yes. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if there's another way to. I think that's a good idea, and we can we can we can stop the screen, screen sharing, sharing we're going on in the awards. awards. Yeah. Cool. Well, in that case, pay attention, pay attention to, to your chat window, window for the titles and names of the artists.
Life is a question of nerves and fibers and slowly built up cells in which thought hides itself and passion has its dream. You may fancy yourself safe and think yourself strong, but a chance tone of color in a room or a morning sky, a particular perfume that you had once loved and that brings subtle memories with it. A line from a forgotten poem that you had come across again. A cadence from a piece of music that you had ceased to play. I tell you that it is on things like these that our lives depend.
just the best. Our lives, let's go through our present woes. We still go along through shiny, happier hours. So every period in each dream, in foul stains, brushing turns, and descending rains, works is so clear. And it runs with lines, so by the breeze, the hill and the moon shines. It collects each flower, and the border shows, and now a new heaven, and its fair bosom shows. All right. Thank you, Amanda and Melissa, um, for navigating that for us uh, through the um, uh, through the quagmire of echoes. <laughs> uh, so thank you. Great job, everyone. I wanted to pop in and say real quick, again, these are available on the website. You can go back and spend as much time as you like with each piece. Um, we hate that you can't be there in person, um, but we're so excited that you guys are able to at least be able to um, view it online. Um, so, and uh, we also, I was going to say in the middle of that, we do have two shots in all the, um, where you're seeing the gallery wall are 360 views. So at any point during that, you are able to uh, kind of spin around. And you did see, uh, we also have all of the, uh, the text panels up as well. And so you'll be able to see those as well. Um, so you can click on them and, and read them in full view. So um, thank you. And now uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Rich. Hey, oh, sorry, John. Hey, yes. Just real quick too, I wanna to iterate too, that we we professionally photograph every exhibition that we do. So we will have professional installation shots. Um, and so if you would like copies of those for your files, just like shoot us an email and we'll make sure we share those with you. Hey, Rich. All righty. <clears throat> Uh, let's see. Uh, Melissa's kind of co-hosting me. Uh, is are, are, are you in with this? I'm here. It's like it's like a tradition we started last year. Uh, but um, anyway, we've got uh, several awards uh, that were jurred in, and uh, so without further ado, please hold your applause until the end. Um, <clears throat> but uh, we have three merit awards, and the first one goes to Darian Farr for Our Place to Hide, Bruce Beach. Okay, I'm, I'm applauding. I'm sorry. I, I get jazz hands. <laughs> um, and uh, the second merit award goes to Carolyn Myers for The Self. And the third... Um, Merit Award goes to Kenny Saylor for Fish Live in Water. 
<laughs> all right. Yeah we're, yeah, we're really pulling this along. Thanks for all the help you guys are jumping in there. I can see a few of you up top there. Uh, we have one honorable mention this year uh, that goes to Cameron Williams for Cradle. And we have a best in show uh, from our juror that goes to Joshua Hoggle for all three of his works, A Million Miles Away, Crop Top, and Queen. And so I would like to congratulate all of you very much. And so now that we're at the end, we can go ahead and... And Rich, I'll go ahead and share so everyone can see the pictures for that one as well. Fantastic. Well, again, great congratulations to everybody. Uh, it would normally be a uh, distribution and presentation of awards as opposed to a mere announcement. Uh, but again, hopefully we'll be able to do this together in the near future. Let's see. Uh, anything else? Yes. Uh, so I know we have a number of students on the call, many of whom are in the exhibition, some who are not, many family members. We have some time and we are here to celebrate and connect. So if anybody has questions for the exhibiting artists or if any of the exhibiting artists would like to say something, now is your time. It's an honor to be part of the exhibit. Was that Diane? I just saw your screen pop up. Diane, it wouldn't be a student show without you. <laughs> I mess up your average age of submitters. <laughs> Well, it's an honor to have a faculty member student in the exhibition. And speaking of fellow colleagues from the Honors College, we have a question from Mike Sloan who asks, are works available for purchase? And I'll say formally, um, we don't have prices listed on the website, but I, um, I think those individual students might be able to answer um, for themselves about that one. Um, I don't know, John Fields, if you want to chime in about any rules and regulations about that. Yeah, typically we don't directly facilitate sales at AVA being a nonprofit and part of a state-run university, but oftentimes these works are available for purchase. So if there is something from the show that caught your eye, we are more than happy to help sort of connect you with the student and um, then you can sort of explore, you know, like any kind of purchase inquiries directly with them. And if any student ever has any questions about that process, Tina and I are also available to sort of help you and give you advice on what it's like to uh, sell your artwork. Now, students, please don't be shy. We really love seeing your faces and we like hearing from you. And I, I have a feeling that the other 60 people in this Zoom room would also take a lot of pleasure from hearing from you. So maybe one of you can ask a question of your fellow student to get a conversation going if it's really a, a sort of if you really want to get something going here now's your chance i have a question for levi how did you was that a drone was that a drone how did you get that aerial shot you're you're muted levi yeah it was a drone <laughs> i have a i've been waiting to use that so i had sally's 104 class spring 
before COVID hit. And uh, I really wanted to put that drone to use. So I was very excited to explore those different angles. <laughs> I, uh, I I thought, I, I don't think there was a bad piece in the show, but I, as a, uh, I studied filmmaking as a, as a student and I thought both of the video pieces were very, very well executed. Thank you. I, um, I've got a question for Harper. Um, there's such a great story behind your photograph of the terrarium. It'd be wonderful if you told everybody what it was. Hey, can y'all hear me? Hold on, I'm trying to turn this on. Hey, y'all. Um, the terrarium has sat in my, um, like my parents' living room, literally as long as I can remember. Um, did it when I was super, super young. And like that, it's just like one of the main focuses in our house that is all over just plants of my mom's and stuff. Um, and so I was, the light was really pretty one day and I just shot at the beginning of quarantine. I have a question for a couple of the artists in the show. We have a handful of exhibitors who are not getting a degree in art, but you're taking art classes. And I find that really intriguing. And I think it's really exciting that your artwork is so strong that you're showing amongst your peers who are getting art degrees. So if any of you are here on the call, would you like to speak to your experience taking art classes outside of your home major? So this is Diane. You know, I technically am an art major, but it certainly is not my home field. And one of the things I have just been so appreciative of is the way that each course I've taken has been beautifully structured. And, and I also can see how they fit together over the curriculum. And so um, it's been a really wonderful experience for me. And I think the fact that it is possible for students to come in and take a few classes is a real gift to the university. And we have, we have um, Mickey in the chat who says, they are the best opportunities for me to stretch my art muscle, which I love that metaphor. And uh, Mickey says, I'm an exercise science major. We really love seeing these cross-disciplinary collaborations. So thank you everyone for reaching out into new disciplines to see where it can take you. And Tina and John, Stacy has asked a question in the, in the chat for you guys, but I have yeah. something to add to that when you're done. Stacy, you know, this show more than anything else, like so with the BFA show, which is which is more like a sort of series of small solo shows kind of put together, you know, Tina and I have a much more kind of hands on in the curatorial sense. Um, but with this show, like the jury show, especially with this version, um, you know, Paul's selections, the juror, um, he really kind of curated it. And and it was and I think what makes this show for me like the best one we've had in a while in terms of the jury show is that it feels curated and really like Tina and I, I mean, it is always a challenge because you do have a group of with the BFA show, especially you have a group of artists who may have nothing in common other than the fact that they're all graduating. And how do you put all that work together and make it feel cohesive and feel like a single exhibition in this case, like he did the job for us completely. It all fit together and it, it was one of the quickest and easiest like layout and installations we've ever done for a student show. Like it just naturally sort of came together. Um, and so he did a really good, really, really good job in that regard. All of the work sort of like felt interchangeable and it didn't matter what you put next to what, it all sort of felt connected in some way. So hats off to him completely. I don't I know if, Tina, if you have anything you want to add or 
Um, I'll agree with everything you just said, but I'll also say, um, I, you know, I was an intern at Ava before becoming a staff member. And so I've, I have seen the jury show, uh, progress over the last few years. And I feel like, um, kind of echoing what John said about the juror kind of actually curating a little bit this year, there seemed to be a variety of mediums really reflecting the department itself. So we have, you know, painting and drawing, there's video work, um, there's sculpture, there's graphic design, which I think it really shows um, the strength of the department as a whole. And so I really appreciated that about uh, Paul's choices this year. And like John said, it made it really easy to place it together because they're there was multiple places that you could put works and it equally feel as strong. Um, and so I really enjoyed putting, uh, laying out this show. It was really beautiful. And I wanted to add on to that. Um, group shows are a lot of fun. Uh, and then bringing people into the space usually is, is also a lot of fun in, in creating a tour. And what I love to see in these shows is what themes uh, are drawn out uh, from the students. And oftentimes you see certain things like self or identity or, or this question of home um, being reflected within it. And so each show is a reflection of what you guys as students are collectively going through um, as students at this time at UAB. And so it's a really great snapshot of what you as students and, and UAB, we, we've gone through collectively in the past year or, or two years. I think most of it's, uh, most of the work is from the last year or two years. And you start to see some themes um, and motifs pulling from one to another, uh, which is really fun to see. And it's fun to see it every year, uh, kind of how those change and what you guys are concerned with uh, going back and forth. I don't have a question, but I'd like to make a comment if that'll help move things along since, yeah, I, somebody wrote in the chat here. It's like never seen art students so quiet. Uh, but what's really wonderful in the chat is that there's a couple hundred comments in there and you guys have a really, you've been able to maintain a very strong sense of community throughout all of this isolation. And it's very clear in the chat that support for each other. And that is such an important part of the arts and pushing each other and collaboration and being together to kind of bounce ideas off of each other. And, um, and it's just, it's a great thing to see that it hasn't disappeared or dissipated. It seems as strong as ever. So again, you know, we look forward to hopefully turning the corner, uh, and getting back. Also like to take a second to, um, Give a little shout out to uh, Danny Ivy, who was uh, responsible for the card and all the promotional uh, image material. So if we can give a round of applause for that as well. So, um, and with that, I will not take up any more time. <laughs> We are getting close to the end of our time. Um, and I want to reiterate uh, what Rich said. There are a lot of wonderful wonderful comments uh, in in the chat. So thank you all for reaching out that way. Um, I think it looks like we're, we're uh, kind of coming to an end of, of questions. Melissa, did you have anything else you wanted to add? That's all from me. I did drop the link to the exhibition in the chat one last time for everyone's convenience. So please spend some time looking through and really soaking in all of the beautiful details in these really extraordinary artworks. Thank you so much for everyone's talent, time, and energy tonight and always. And I will say, I think my email got buried, but all the students should have my email. Um, I coordinated the drop-off. Um, I'm Tina Ruggieri, so my email is Tina Rugg at uab.edu if you would like install shots. Um, Shalika, um, our gallery and ex uh, excuse me, um, collections, collections and exhibitions, and exhibitions <laughs> coordinator. I could not think of that word. Um, she has taken, she takes beautiful installation shots and she will have those ready in the next couple of days. So we would be happy to share them. All right. Thank you everyone. 
uh, we hope to be able to see everyone in person soon. Take care.